as many of you know, I finished the left hand wing um, for the Hawker Hunter, the Micro Hawker Hunter Jet uh, project, which is based on uh, this Airfix kit, sorry, Revel kit, and I've done the left hand wing, as you can see there. It's uh, scaled at about 1.2 bigger than the actual the plastic kit. Um, so the final plane will actually fly, it'll actually be a flying RC plane. So I've finished the right hand wing um, and joined the two halves, the two skins, which are basically an upper skin, something like that, and then a lower skin. And when you join them, then you get the full wing assembly, which is very light, and you can see through that. But um, very light um, structure, very strong structure. And um, so what I've done is uh, now that I've resolved all the the mold, the molding, the printing, the design uh, elements for the wing. Um, it's just a simple case of mirroring the cat parts over um, and printing them and finishing them. So I thought it'd be an ideal opportunity um, to show you how I'm finishing the ABS parts. As you can see down on the bench, um, you can see some of the iterations I've been through um, on this journey. So th th there has been a hell of a lot of work um, that's gone into it um, to get to this point. Um, and then last week, or over the weekend rather, you know, I was able to cast um, I think about four skins in a row uh, without any um, serious issues. So, you know, I'm confident now, um, although I'm learning which I, with every single print or cast I do, I'm learning something new. So the um, process is continually um, evolving. Um, I will, um, I'm at a point where I'm happy to actually share um, with people um, exactly how I'm doing it. Just a little bit of background on why um, I've taken this route um, with with the um, the composites or the casting side of things. Um, the first time I saw 3D printing um, or printers, affordable 3D printers, I got really excited about the the opportunity or the to actually. Um, skip some processes in the traditional um, mold making and lay up um, that are traditionally used to create composite planes or composite parts of any sort. Um, traditionally uh, from what, I, what I've read and what I can gather um, you would normally create a sort of master or a plug um, which would be carved out of wood, um, it could be foam, it could be a fiberglass part and once you've got that, it's like your master, so once you've got that, you then create a, a mould around that. And something like this would require a two-part mould, so a top and a bottom. Um, and basically all I've done is I've gone, I've skipped that plug, creating the, the master point, uh, the master uh, plug. Because my master plug technically is, is, is in the sort of electronic form, in CAD form. So I've gone straight from... The, the design in CAD and then straight to creating the, the negatives as it were so the cavity um, which is this part and the core which I call this part here um, so the male the male I normally call the car the core and the female the cavity um, so from a manufacturing point of view or from a hobbyist point of view there's a huge amount of um, time saved um, not having to manually make a plug plus the the part um, the moulds can be remade at any time so if I find I damage a mould either either a top or a bottom um, I can just reprint it uh, finish it and uh, off I go again and I have done it um, several times even with these iterations, I've tried different um, pores and cavities. I mean, this is one of the, the, the original um, layups, um, designs. Um, and the, the wing was way too strong um, and therefore too heavy. So um, all the ready areas, basically, I redesigned the, the, the core part of the, sorry, the, yeah, the core part of the, um, the mold which is that part there 
and where all the red areas are I took the tarot out so um, I think that's yeah you can't really see it but yeah um, if you compare let's have a look at those two wings there you can see the difference um, just to save weight so I didn't in this instance all I had to do is reprint the this part of the mold um, and the the work I'd done on the cavity side of the mold is fine um, and that's worked on several iterations so I've used <laughs> part of a mold with a different with a different core or a different cavity with a different core um, and that works really really well so repeatability um, later on uh, is great so if I damage a mold I just reprint it and um, I'm going again everything lines up everything fits uh, perfectly so that's one thing that got me excited and then it must have been about 25 years ago uh, when I was a lot younger um, I was at university and I did a, a fine arts sculpture degree and we did things like um, lost, uh, lost wax and uh, ceramic shell casting in bronze did some sand casting with aluminium and um, that's where part of the idea came from but um, during one of the holidays I actually worked at a, a taxidermist uh, we had to paint up his house while I was working and um, I got to see how he worked with um, expanded foams and fiberglass to make like the bodies of the animals and the first time I saw the um, expanded foam, um, uh, the urethane expanded foams, it must be a good 30 years ago now, um, it really got me thinking and sort of planted the seed. Um, as many of you know, a lot of us have had that same idea using um, urethane foams um, for RSC. Um, and then um, further on, when I, st when I got back into the hobby about four years ago, um, some of the glider guys were, were experimenting with urethane foams and again um, Electrolyte, the Electrolyte project that's on RC Groups um, I think Brett, he, I think he experimented with some uh, foam as well um, so as soon as I had access to a printer uh, about a year and a half ago it's one of the first things I wanted to try is create these moulds um, with a sort of hobbyist um, 3D printer um, to a standard where I can cast uh, urethane foam um, or composites because when I started out I wasn't really 100% sure whether they would work, whether they would be light enough or whether they would be strong enough um, so there's a lot of other ideas you can do with this um, so you can use, you can, you could do a combination of um, carbon fibre and foam um, so that, I mean where these panels are we could just have like the foam struts uh, or ribs and spars and then maybe a couple of layers of uh, fiberglass or carbon fiber to get the weight down or the strength up or I, I don't really know I'm, I'm fairly inexperienced at that but anyway so that's, that's where the the idea came from uh, so follow along um, please um, subscribe um, ask me some questions um, or offer advice um, one of the main reasons I'm at the point where I am, both with 3D printing and um, RC composites, composites um, is basically because of all the people who have helped me, all the people who have shared videos similar to what I'm hoping to do with this. So thank you to all those involved um, who've helped me both on the 3D printing side of things and the RC composites and design side of things.